do you want to do a podcast? We make a darn good team. It always goes without a hitch. Let's head to Twitch and go start up the stream. Do you want to do a podcast? It's the Nerd Glasses Podcast. Let's start now. Hi everyone and welcome to the Nerd Glasses Podcast. Come? Alright, I'll do my I'll do my own bit for myself. Oh, oh wait, no silence! <laughs> We're doing it. Get off the road. Hey Dave. Yes. There's been a lot of talk recently about how hard it is. You know, like, there's always some economic indicator. And oh, right God, now, you're firing me, aren't no, you? No, no. We're right downsizing now, the podcast. Dave, I'm talking about how expensive eggs are. Okay? Like, that's the thing. Everyone's like, oh, my gosh, do I get a carton of eggs or do I put a down payment on a house kind of thing? But here's, <laughs> here's a tip. Here's a tip for people that live in a place where you can get groceries from international markets. Get Norwegian eggs. I hear that they're more affordable. <laughs> I just like that, like, bird flu, be a bitch, says Love Alec. I just, I uh, like, I like where this is already go. I believe <laughs> to buy some eggs from the Norwegian farmer's market. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Nerd Glasses Podcast. I'm Boater. I'm Dave Van. Oh, and we have fun here. How's everyone doing? Thank you so much for dropping in. Everybody that's already in chat, Amp Slayer, Love Alec, Taco Pill, uh, people who might be higher on chat, I don't even know. Thank you, everybody, for being here and for being here for our brand of weird as we dive into the show, which for the first time in a little while, Dave, starts with a Twitch ban. Holy shit. You're not Dave, but I'll take that, firstly, that response. No, no. Firstly... <laughs> Fie on you, Twitch. You were doing so well with not getting banned in a very public way. And now here you are. Shame on you. Shame. So one of the things that's important for us as streamers to know is to be aware of the terms of service and to keep abreast of things that are bannable offenses. Case in point. Did you know that it is against the terms of service to uh, hop onto things like chat roulette, whatever, that are here, it randomly pairs you with someone else for video chat. That is against the terms of service to, to do. Oh! Because it even if nothing comes up, it still opens the door to inadvertently violating terms of service with something that someone comes up with on screen. Um, kind of risks that you run with those kinds of things. Um, streamer Classify did not know that. So his stream was cut off mid-broadcast as he was streaming with the video chat site Omegle. That's literally against the TOS crying emoji, said one Twitter user in response, and Classify responded, we ain't no skull emoji. It's like, well, now you do, and thank you for reminding all of us that that's a thing as well. By the way, just as a heads up, ignorance of the rules is, is not, not a, a defense. defense of the rules. It is, however, an entirely viable way of going on Twitter and filibustering. Um, More like rigor mortis, should I watch the same terrible workplace harassment training at work as we were required to last year or this? Tough choices. Well, I mean, you have to do that, but there's nothing saying that you can't watch both at the same time with one of them with the volume turned as low as it goes without it being detected that it's being muted and thus not watched. I, I will also say you can watch this program and see all the workplace harassment we do to each other. <laughs> Only harassment if it's non-consensual. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> that feels really good, actually. Dave, what do we have coming out in the next seven days for games? Um, I won't, Hang on. Just <laughs> that's, that's a good shoulder. You can do whatever you want with that one. So, I know, uh, uh, I, know I usually do three, but I won't lie. I, had, I got three immediately. One of them is more of a meme than anything else, and one of them <laughs> is uh, a, a reminder like no others. Um, but uh, th the first one, so we have five today. So apologies, folks that are used to the usual numbers and uh, things like that. Um, it's still a prime, so it's fine. The, the one that I'm excited about, the one, I'm not going to lie, kind, <laughs> of, kind of mostly excited about because I will be running out Friday I will literally be, I have to do the newsing people on my way out of my classroom on Friday 
to get to get because on 127.23, PlayStation right. 5, Xbox Series X, and Windows later are going to be getting Dead Space Remaster. We have seen so many trailers about this. We've seen so much information given. And I cannot wait to sink both of my blood-covered hands into this game and be so feared for my existence because this game takes place in the 26th century. Mm -hmm. You play as Isaac Clark, a repair engineer, who is, of course, given the wrong work ticket, given improper tools, and not told what the actual job is. But you show up mm. at the USG Ishimura to find not a broken communications relay, but instead the undying and undead. <laughs> Um, this is a game for me personally that when it came out on the Xbox 360, I 100%ed the game. And I don't mean I beat it. I mean I unlocked every single unlock, got every single voice log, beat it on every difficulty I possibly could, found every secret, every morsel, just delicious storytelling bit that there was in that game because there's a lot of it. And it was a delicious, horrifying, deadly meal. And so, if this game is bad, by the way, on Tuesday, we'll be having a very nice bonfire uh, here in the studio. Dave, uh, how many games have you 100%ed, just to put this into perspective? Uh, Dead Space, Alan Wake, and uh, 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 The Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Mine is a right around the same amount of, yeah, like fewer than five, certainly. Why does Dave's face look more naked than usual? Oh, uh, it's it's just because when I'm reading things up close, I uh, I take the nerd glasses off. Um, but the remake of the 2008 Dead Space, this game has gotten love. It's gotten delayed for for good reasons, and all of the news I'm pointing out, it is it'll easily to be better than Callisto Protocol. Exactly, Anti. Yeah. Exactly. More like Morgan Moore is much better. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I am. <laughs> can we file a ticket with maintenance to ask if they can fight the undead? Who knows? But my response to this is I cannot wait to be playing this game and I cannot wait to stream this game because... Do you plan on keeping it just for stream or is it something that like you'll play on your own but when stream time comes around it's like, hey, chat, hop on in the middle. Uh, we're going. So I have very nicely, I only play the story of Death Stranding on stream. Uh-huh. And I've been playing Death Stranding on stream now for two years, three years. And that's the game that just keeps on giving Kojima-style storyline. But We'll talk more about that in the program because I did play more of it this weekend. But this is a game that if you catch me playing it, ask to share the screen because I will likely dedicate a lot of my stream time to it. But I will be playing this game off of stream because it's mine and it could be ours. If you merely ask to join into the horror um if this is that good i might save it but this is likely going to be one of those games that i just mwah, mwah, just feast upon at home I've, um, I've occasionally there's been a couple games where like hey this is what i'm playing and then just when stream time comes around it's like you don't really need to know everything that's led up to this just hop on in and i'm gonna keep playing it so. In the case of, like, a remake of a game that's this old, though, I, I kind of feel like, hey, if you really want the plot, it's out there. Like, yeah, and exactly. Detail. So it's it's totally fine. Yeah. Um, moving on. This game, uh, uh, should I mention the meme game since it does come out next? Sure. Um, this game coming out on the 30th exclusively to Switch. I know you've seen it before. We talked about it. And it memed so hard on Sonic that it gets a mention here. Coming out on the 30th. For the Nintendo Switch, Trek to Yomi. You may remember this game as the one that after the last Sonic game came out and had so many different like options and ways to get the pre-order and stuff like that, that they issued a chart for it to keep it straight. Even though the chart was needlessly complicated and it wasn't actually that bad, Trek to Yomi came out with the chart and said, here's how to get our game. One option, the entire way across, the entire way down. If you the buy same the game, option in all the cells. Yeah, if you buy the game, you get, you get all the game. The game. You get like. the game. Uh, and and so they they should a really good burn to Sega there. But um, it's I think it's a game that like it's coming to Switch now, but it's already been out for other systems. Gained yeah, generally favorable reviews. Um, and my God, folks, if you are a fan of 
uh, 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 lawyer Shrek to Yoni. <laughs> and I was like, tell me more. <laughs> um, I'm really looking forward to this game. It will probably be one of those, if money magically falls into my lap for games, it's definitely one of those ones I want to get. Um, but it's had none but good reviews. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, moving on to a game that is, in fact, Steve-flavored. Coming out on the 31st for Windows, uh, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PlayStation 4. Xbox One and PS4. Xbox One and PS4, Switch, and Windows. SpongeBob SquarePants. The, the Cosmic Shake! PlayStation comes up dark. SpongeBob SquarePants. Wait, I guessed the wrong game! <laughs> This game comes to you from THQ Nordic, the Cosmic Shake, as my grandmother would call him, the Square Idiot, um, <laughs> travels to Wish Worlds. Uh, uh, the only other thing you need to know about this game is that you are, of course, joined by Patrick Starr, who is transformed into a balloon. Um, All right. By the way, I mentioned this game because both Steve and I looked at THQ Nordic, the same people that made... Uh, 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 all of the good TV adaptation video games. Yeah. So this one, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you think, ha ha, I have ha ha monies and I kind of want a game that I don't really have to take too seriously, but I'm going to have a good time on this one. This is the one by I'm pointing up for, for nerd vision, not down at the computer. This is the one because it has the pedigree to be both entertaining SpongeBob filled, but also not a game that at the end of it makes you think I spent $60 on this crap. Like, I was about to ask it. A double 30, win. $39.99. Dave, uh, Dan says it's not a game. I mean, it's not, it's, it's by those standards, by the, by the old ancient standards of, of behind the counter. Uh, uh, it is not a full game. Um, this next title. I missed this one. I missed this one's three other installments. And this is the fourth one. And for that, I apologize. And to Boder specifically, I apologize. Because on the 31st, coming to PlayStation 4, 5, Xbox One, and Series X, is a game called We Are Here Forever. Okay. Now, the reason I apologize for it is because it went, uh, uh, We Are Here Forever was released on PC in May of 2022. Okay. And it is a two-player co-op game wherein you solve puzzles, you explore, and escape together. It's first-person adventures. So you escape together or not at all. And you are in the Antarctic. More specifically, we are here forever. Uh, uh, you come across the Relmer Castle rock where you have to escape because you are thrown there through a portal and these things. This is the fourth installment of the franchise starting with we are here. We are here to T-O-O. -O. Okay, yeah. We are here to... I forget whether it's a GAN or something else, and then we are here forever. Uh, Boater, you and I look every year for a game in May to play mm -hmm. together, and by God, I have a PC that can play video games, and I found us a game to play together. Okay. Done. So we'll we'll have to we'll have to figure out if uh, we're gonna start earlier in the series or just go with the latest. We can start in this part of the franchise, but. Uh, so, so it's it's something that you don't necessarily have to know the previous games for. Yes, cool. You don't necessarily have to because the game started out as a game jam um, level game, um, and then expanded into what okay. is now this expansive exploration game. Uh, nice. I'm not gonna lie, when I looked at this one, I literally out loud went, "Damn it, it's Portal Two, but it's perfect." <laughs> you still need to get me your footage from like three years ago. It's so many gigs, and Google is so mad at me. Um, well, then, well, then I'm coming over to your house, and I'm bringing my hard drive, and I'll make dinner. Um, good. Our our we'll watch Andor. Last of fourth games is a game you've heard us talk about. It's a game we have fawned about, and you have seen at Twitch.tv/slash Boaterbug. It played. 
coming out on the 31st for PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Switch has been a Microsoft and PC exclusive game. That's right, Power Wash Simulator is finally coming to the rest of folks with with a special oh, that's right. Easter eggity that you explore the mansion that I don't remember the name of, and I feel very bad as a PlayStation uh, fanboy. Laura Cross mentioned from, like, the original Tomb Raider games. Like, I'm looking at this. Yes. I heard about this, but I didn't actually watch. And then I'm looking at some of that. I'm like, that's, like, straight up the pool and crates and all that from the tutorial level of the first game. Yep. Which, Dave, do you remember tutorial levels? I miss those. I, I will say, uh, yes, I also miss tutorial levels real bad. But this because one, otherwise you just go into the game and it's like, oh, here's how you, you, know, you p grab onto the rock or whatever. It's like, mm. The 31st will see Season, A Letter to the Future as well, and I am intrigued. Auntie, tell me about it in chat because we would love to hear stuff like that. And to all of you in chat, we see you, we appreciate you, Power and we Raider. love you. For making this, welcome Vladdy, Power Raider. Exactly. I'm really curious to see if you can if you find a skeleton in the free freezer um, of of the mansion. Um, tomb washer says Taco Bell. <clears throat> Anti Anti, could you uh, uh, give us a, a Anti Klaus plug of games while I quickly mention the fact that that's all the games for the next seven days okay. that are coming out um, in the next. 30 minutes, however, you can vote with your channel points. We're down to, to about 15 now. What we're going to be trying. We have on the docket Cherry Jubilee Thin Mint, Mint Thins, The Mystery Box that has something very different than we've had the last couple of times, or Snowball M&Ms. Dave asked me before the show went live. Or, or he told me, if the thing that comes out of the mystery box is too gross, that I don't have to feel obliged to eat it. So, I don't know if that was supposed to apply to tonight. Do with that information as you will. What I will say is, you folks at home... And there's the mystery box. ...who didn't vote for the mystery box uh, uh, one week, missed out on an onion. I'm just saying. Sometimes I go to the grocery store, and I just pick up a random thing, and I'm like, this looks absolutely horrid. Um, the problem is... We haven't had a lot of funny foods at the restaurant, at the places that I shop at. Uh -huh. So I've been a little bit disappointed, which is why we've been having holiday themed things. And I hope yeah. no one minds. Um, Ante. It looks like an animated or painted movie and is a third person adventure. Seems kind of whimsical. You drive around your bike and take photos, basically documenting the ending world. Uh, not sure, really. Guess it's okay that we know very little. Yeah, it seems like just enough of a tease that I could... That sounds amazing! Definitely check it out. More like Rigor Mortis posting a YouTube link to the trailer to it. Cool. Awesome, awesome stuff. So we'll we'll check that out, and we may actually mention that on next week's roundup, because the 31st is going to be the Tuesday, so it could technically make next week's show. So thank you for letting us know about that. Beat me to it. Hell yes. In the meantime, since we can't play that yet, Dave, what have you been up to the past seven days or so? <clears throat> well. Mm. Oh, I should have brought my book with me. Since last well, we were together, really... I have played several football games, several baseball games. My favorite football team in real life uh, 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 lost in the playoffs. But I will say I was really proud Sunday. I'm listening. Don't worry. They panned over to the, mm -hmm. the boxes and who was standing up and jumping up and down and waving at the players but Damar Hamlin himself was at the stadium mm. was up and moving and things like that and I was really proud and really happy because that man died on television like a month ago and he was up yeah. and cheering and I was super stoked about that I am listening because I'm like and oh yeah that mm, to yeah. be totally honest I'm, I'm wearing my Buffalo Bills hat today because they lost this weekend. They're out of the playoffs. They are no more in, in the actual NFL playoffs. And I will tell you this in life and the lesson that I took from that. Folks, your fandom of things doesn't have to be a fandom of things just because they're successful. You can enjoy something even in its imperfect moments and things like that. Um, good to hear he's out and about. Oh, no, something about sports. I know. I know. Um, but you guys have no idea how excited I was. And they kept panning to him and showing him 
standing and moving yeah. and full range of motion and hopping up and down. And I cannot emphasize enough, that man was dead for 10 plus minutes. Like... On the field, on oh national television, God. like before resuscitated, so, and then, yeah, so relieved and so so excited to see him healthily standing and doing and being. Um, also, really stoked that the NFL, the NFL Players Association, uh, voted, and he got the entirety of his year's contract paid out uh, at the time. Nice um, to make sure that his family were kept whole and these things because he was there was no chance he was going to go back on the field this year. No. Um, and potentially ever, but that's a dark subject we'll talk about. However, uh, this these last two weeks on the weekend Wednesday, I've been playing Cult of the Lamb. Okay. And this weekend, I decided that I was going to um, do more of that. Um, and so, uh, since last time you all saw me streaming Cult of the Lamb, uh, I have since then gotten pretty much 90% of the way through the game. He has since played much more Cult of the Lamb. And there will be none left for stream. <laughs> um, what I will say is, uh, uh, and and please, folks in chat, if you can relate to this experience, because this was the thing I kind of wanted to bring as a chat topic was, um, in in Cult of the Lamb, there was a Twitch integration where you, as a Twitch viewer, could create a cultist and join the group. Yep. And to me, that meant a lot, because your name, you are putting your name and your brand in my hands to to make judgments of and do these things with and things like that. I am proud to say that every person that did participate in such a way uh, died naturally of old age and is buried very nicely in our in our corner thing. And no, no, really, every single player uh, 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 character, none of them were sacrificed, but uh, all of them can be resurrected. What I will say is later in the game, I started to get a little bit upset because my little garnted cult uh, came under attack by more powerful people and they were stealing my followers and like killing them and things. Were and they I, paying for followers? You can pay for <laughs> followers in that game. But even worse, they were like stealing away my little my little my little goat people and my little sheeps and my little my little weird anthropomorphized fungi people and like they were stealing them and like murdering them in front of me and they were like bow to me and i was like fuck you bros if you killed my friend like and that's earnestly i'm not gonna lie i kind of the game fell to the wayside and more just the personal pride in the fact that like these are my people fuck you yeah. took over and i murked that boss like immediately <laughs> I was like, screw you for eating my friends and people. They trusted me, and you murdered them. Um, so I took that game infinitely too personally uh, and infinitely too hard. Um, and I absolutely don't think uh, uh, I can continue to play it because now I know like that's the dangers that my community potentially faces. Yeah. And I just can't bring myself to like do it. So I, uh, I, I am... Thankful to everyone who is tuned in to the weekend Wednesdays and to the the, the Sunday of where I played this, um, and then the random other day. It's Thursday that I streamed it, um, and and all of you who did the Twitch integration things where you made it either harder or easier for me to play right. and these things. It was so much fun, but um, I I take it a little too personally when the in-game people kill my favorite people, and I just can't handle shit like that. Uh, yeah. I just can't. Um, what about, what about you, Boater? Have you ever had that, a, a, a similar in games, uh, uh, where? So, um, it's not with Twitch integration, but when I was playing Battletech, um, I, for Play Live last year, I was able, you know, people were able to, um, donate to make a, a, a character in my squad and nothing awful really befell any of them. Um, uh, partially because I kind of fell out of the game halfway through the month. <laughs> but other times that I played the game, because it is that kind of game that is, you know, kind of XCOM thing where if you lose someone, they're, they're gone unless they happen to roll that, like, one out of 20 to survive the hit, uh, the otherwise fatal hit. Like, I've definitely lost some, you know, really great uh, squad mates in that game in times that I played. And, yeah, that, that hurts uh, enough that it's like, is it worth quitting the game, force quitting the game, and starting the mission over again? And sometimes I do that. Other times ah! I'm like, no, I'm going to play this straight. They go on the memorial wall. 
That's part of the reason I, I originally, like, first year of doing uh, 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 St. Jude's, uh, uh, where it was streamed on my channel and I was raising, um, I was like, I'm going to play XCOM. And then I was like, I am not putting my friend's name on a list. And then yeah. feeling incredibly bad when they die due to no consequences and choices of my own. Um, I saved some Fire Emblem. Yeah, there are um, a few losses in Valkyria Chronicles I would not be able to stand. Steve, I'm counting that as another point towards me buying the new Fire Emblem game. Someone else mentioned I did, Fire I Emblem. I did hear, actually, um, yeah, actually, we had a friend over uh, this weekend, and... Apologies. I, I put my bite down on the, on the armrest. Uh, we had a, we had a friend over who's, who's played it a bit, and he's enjoyed it, so we are probably going to be... Uh, grabbing that but while he was over he was uh here for brunch with boater this past week where uh we played some more played up um and because it's the chinese new year uh there was a themed uh restaurant for it a new dish dumplings uh and it was his first time playing so we expected maybe we'll get to like day six or seven we'll do a couple of runs whatever we went to overtime day four nice we yeah. killed it our first time through. Dumplings are easy to make, but it takes a lot of time to, like, prep some of the ingredients. So when I got a sharp knife, it was like, all right, cool. Short of automation, we're doing the best we can here. And eventually it just I still wasn't turning out product quite fast enough. But, yeah, um, it, uh, it played up, continues to be fun. Whenever I go back to it, that dev team does a great job of keeping it fresh, introducing new themes, like... I, th I think, I don't know if it, there's always going to be something seasonal, but there is very often. Um, and not just like, oh, it, it's snowing now for Christmas, but they added a whole new um, just idea of how that might work when they added a bunch of automation. They, they are keeping it fresh with the seasonal stuff, and I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, sorry, I kind of took over from you there. No, no. Um, I'm, I've also been playing... Um, a lot of Lego Star Wars, Skywalker Saga, as I mentioned. Um, Steph and I started playing Episode 3 last night. And because we'd already done a lot of the open areas in Episodes 1 and 2, and Episode 3 covers a lot of the same ground, we speed ran the first two-thirds of that movie in-game. Like, half of the movie was done in 20 minutes of, like, mission <laughs> stuff. And then finally... We hit Kashyyyk, and we're like, hey, this is open world hub area, and we spent like at least half an hour trying to find hidden bricks and stuff in there. Um, we, we did finish episode three, and I don't know if we're going to do some like galaxy free play for a while just to hit all the hubs that we've gotten, because we've finally gotten almost all of the character types. We still don't have a scavenger, which is really frustrating, um, but like we can get a lot of the stuff that we missed before um i think we already 100 percent of the federal district on coruscant so just looking to do more stuff like that um so i don't know if we'll do that uh, next time that we play or if we're going to dive into new hope <laughs> dude Chris, the, the only gripe i have with the game is the story parts are too short well like when we were playing episode one and then there's like oh cool we'll just wander around otogunga for a while trying to find uh kyber bricks and starships and stuff like that when you're doing these open world stuff along the way uh, in between missions, it works really great. But when you've already basically done the open stuff, then yeah, episode three went pretty fast because it's open stuff that we'd already done. Uh, I do want to get back to uh, uh, Love, Alec, and Anti when talking about uh, 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 Cult of the Lamb. It's supposed to be getting some major, major updates soon, and yep. they're free. The clears say it won't be paid DLC and a rather big of, and of game integrity. I'm happy. Um, Talking about this is how I get when I lose Pikmin. Good. Okay. I'm not the only one who gets really hot and bothered by pe by losing their peeps. Um, when you bring them back, even if it's one of the bishops, kill them. But I don't want them to die. I don't want bad things happening to my friends and people. And if I can prevent that by not playing a game, so be it. This is the <laughs> only way that he would be fine with a bad thing happening to a friend. Dave? Yeah? Look at me. Yeah. <gasps> that's the only way. <laughs> that's that's it. <laughs> I'm allowed to get hurted. None of you are. <laughs> well, that's I, I was going to go with, you're only allowed to get hurted. His hands. <laughs> nope. nope, nope, nope His nope, nope. soft hands. <laughs> um, more like rigor mortis. Just wanted to know. Uh, I did not get bitted by a vampire, werewolf, zombie, or, or uh, 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 rabies booster. Uh, but I did 
get checked that my that my uh, my tetanus and other things were updated because I was bitten by one of my students. Um, I do so love them, which means that on the full moon I become adorable uh, because that's what my student is. They are just the cutest little pie, and I love them. But Dave, so much. it's not a full moon. Oh. <laughs> 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 um, but yes, that's uh, so. Be warned on full moons. Uh, I will become adorable, um, and that's that. Um, I will. I do want to say because I have gotten hurt at my job before and things like that. Um, the the doctor who attended me has seen me now four separate times <laughs> for almost this exact thing. Uh, oh so God, Dave, you're a frequent flyer. He, oh God, my file there is about this big. Okay, um, he I waltzed in and he goes, "What was it this time? Teeth, nails, head butted, kicked? Uh, what uh, what happened?" Uh, I'm friends. Can... I'm friends with an ENT and EMT, and and they will sometimes tell me about like, oh well, we've had another a couple of frequent fly, frequent flyer visits last night, and just God. I I count myself as very lucky that the doc came in with a way comfier chair than you'd think a doctor would be able to push in. No computer, and him and I just shoot the shot the shit for like 45 minutes. Huh? And then meanwhile, was... I was rushed out of my ortho appointment yesterday in three minutes. Like, nope. I I won't necessarily reveal things because i don't want people to get in nope, trouble that's fine but me and that doc had a great time we chit chatted about nothings i bragged to be totally honest about here at insane games tv and the endeavors that i have there we're I very bragged braggable about, i bragged about my uh, my students and how well they're doing and i bragged about insane games as a business and how proud i am of all of the facets of my life including uh the fact that my wife still hasn't left me um <laughs> i was like look i'm still married it's still still Somehow, <laughs> she hasn't left me yet. I don't know. Um, but, um, yeah, it was it was good times. It was good times straight up until it wasn't, and then it was good again. Um, <laughs> so that's what I've been playing and doing and yammering about. Um, should we, Steve, come show off your ring. Oh, yeah. By the nice. way, 100% uh, 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 of the people involved with the Nerd Glasses podcast are taken. Uh, mm -hmm. By the way, so uh, sorry. Zoom out the camera just a little. So, sorry, gentle folk. We're spoken for. Um, the last one that I'll mention is watching Bad Batch. Which Taco Bell <laughs> disappointing. <laughs> is Bad Batch, which um, should have been a pod racing episode. They go to this planet. There's a, a race that's deadly and you need very fast reflexes to do it. And you need to know exactly what you're doing. And there's no reason for it not to have been pod racing. Did the king return? What? Did the king from episode two return? The, the droid. On C-3PO's body. No. Oh. The internet lied to me. <laughs> Amp. Oh, how nice. Y'all have matching rings. <laughs> More like a Wait, if I join Nerd Glasses, will I become married? Uh, uh, I feel like this should be a selling point. Actually, I am a reverend. So <laughs> I, 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 can marry, I can and will marry So we be want to marry I feel like there are other people that would need to be part of that discussion. Oh boy, Griff Kubo, welcome with the raid, Brunerd. What's up? It's been what so up, Duner? It's been so long since I've seen you. How you doing, man? Brunerd's been crushing it streaming lately, Boater. I don't know where you've been. Brush off shoulders. Oh, yeah, um, I know. I've been I know. I've been lurking there, Brunerd. Love to see your work. Oh gosh. <laughs> Unfortunately, that reverend offered John out after the raid, but yay, Griff Kuba, hell yes, Duder. Thank you so much for the raid and much love. Um, I am a reverend. I am a licensed reverend here in the United States. I have performed one wedding um, and and am entirely willing to um, uh, yay. Anyway, the raid song can get turned down a smidge. We will definitely take note of that, and we will have the production folks look into that. Thank you so much for the notes. And about by that, it. I mean as soon as that came in, Steve went, "Huh, what can I do about that?" No, no, he'll he'll well because <laughs> so he's he's she's checking to see if there's something we can do live. If not, then it's something that yeah we'll talk about 
and get set for... Oh my god, more like Rigor Mortis is unlocking so many bonus stories that we can't get into because we only have an hour for this program. Um, I have been to... You say that after she asks how many exorcisms. Yes! I used to be a paranormal investigator! That's right. Me and Vladdy and right. Vladdy's family, we were paranormal investigators and we did help people move on to the next, uh, uh, the next phase of the afterlife. Uh, I have so many stories about that, but that's for another stream. Yep. Um, <laughs> Sometime when we play Phasmophobia. Yes, I will. I will gladly talk about it. In fact, one of these days, I am going. To I did. Drag... I just forgot. Dave is a, a mythical. Dave is basically a cryptid, and I just forget a bunch of the stuff. I think Dan... that's part of it. Like, there's Dan. Dan he has antiemetic that... properties. On 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 uh, behind the counter, Dan acknowledged that I was a cryptid because every week it was like it was like oh yeah when I used to work like this he was like what how many jobs have you had Dave. <laughs> Do you have a new show called Dave's Stories? You people would not watch that for two months. <laughs> you would get um, real bored because I get real excited about one thing and I would talk about it for four and do, a half hours. Do join his his Discord because the Storytime with Dave channel is a wonderful treat. What? Well, thank you. Because I, I don't, won't lie, I, I lose a lot of sleep about that because I post things and then I'm like, was that too much? Should I not have said that? Do I not do these things? But that's... It's fine, dear. Thank you. Good. Good. Um... So many stories. Okay. We haven't even gotten okay. to. <laughs> you know what? Okay, fine. I know that the prediction is done, but let's do a new story so that we can get some some momentum going in that. Um, and let's go with one that's familiar. Dave, if I say military war gaming gamers release uh, oh, sensitive no. intel, how many times have we talked about that on the show before? We've had at least four. Three stories where the, the game developers had to be like, we can't have this on our forums. Get rid of that. Like, um, I only remember two, so I'll, we'll go with three. Um, most of the time, it's been with War Thunder. And it's to the point where I almost didn't bring this to the show because it's happened so many times before. But sure enough, was um, do you remember, was it F-16, F-15? Oh, that's right. It was both on different days all in the last seven days. Someone leaked F-16 um, specs to prove a point in an argument about the game. The F-16 is old enough, came out in the 60s or something, which makes me feel ancient. Um, was, the F-16 is old enough that its stuff cannot be classified anymore. However, it is still restricted for export, meaning it cannot be shared outside of the country. And when you post it on an internet forum, that counts as being outside of the country. And then the next day, someone did so with the F-15 Eagle, which isn't even in the game yet! <laughs> <sighs> Normally, I, I, like I said, I wasn't even going to uh, bring it up. And then Sustaina... Uh, in Discord, shared a screenshot from 4chan. So, and so take this with a grain of salt. This is this is a story. This is not verified. This is something someone said on the internet. But what the person on the internet said brought me great mirth. A friend of mine just got a job at a federal contractor. As part of the security clearance... Right there, should have stopped talking. You have already said too much, and you have already potentially endangered your friend's employment. Please. <laughs> As part of security clearance, a private investigator has to investigate the person, call up witnesses, friends. I was on the contact list. I get a call asking basic questions like, would he overthrow the government or shit like that? And then, does he play War Thunder? <laughs> Guys, holy fuck, we did it. War Thunder is an official risk to national security. It is, though! They post so much forbidden stuff in there, and it's the weird forbidden stuff. Like, the government stuff where you think, where did they get a picture of that? Where did yeah, they get like a picture of this? Yeah, like, it's been both War Thunder and World of Tanks. Because <laughs> Gaijin Entertainment, guys. Oof, buddy. Um, so, and yeah, most it's been War Thunder a lot recently. Um, uh, is the F-16 being able to plot point in Top Gun Maverick? Ask someone who's watched Top Gun Maverick. Because uh, <laughs> that's not me. It's not me either, I'm sorry. Um, but, like... I remember the original Top Gun was F-14s, F-14 Tomcats. So maybe that's what you're thinking. Should we have our Should we have our, our Siri moment? Hey Siri, what planes did they fly in the Top Gun movie? 
but that's going to be a 14. Here's an answer from IMDb. Although Maverick and Rooster are flying an F-14, the reflections in their helmets show an F-18 cockpit. <laughs> <laughs> Bird! Oh, wait. Thank you. No problem. I will not be murdered when the robots take over. <laughs> I will be killed mercifully because I've been very, very nice to my electron... Most of my... Some of them. As long as the toaster doesn't become sentient. Why do you have a shotgun in the kitchen? Transformers. I <laughs> laughed, she laughed, the toaster laughed, I shot the toaster. It was a good time. <laughs> I love that one. That one, no matter how many times that one comes up. Um, a quick story before we get to our schnick. Um, yeah. If you go to Google right now, and you Google The Last of Us, there's a little Easter egg in the bottom right corner. A little mushroom. And if you click on it, it starts to spread out among your screen. And if you keep clicking on it, it keeps spreading to your entire I, screen. I don't like that. That is exactly how the video game The Last of Us and the infection spread and things like that. And I love that video games are once again back in the zeitgeist and Google is doing a Google meme thing. That's going right up there with the Google Chuck Norris and click I'm feeling lucky and get the uh, Chuck Norris Googles you, you don't Google him, um, and the do a barrel roll uh, and a couple other um, hinky little askew things. Askew would be my favorite. Yeah. Which one? Askew. Do you know what the word askew means? Well, yes. It but means slightly crooked. Yeah. Google the word askew. Do it right now. Google Maps with Pokemon? Pity's sake, it would help if I could type Google.com correctly. I just Google search Google.com. Oh my god, I can't type. This is taking much longer than it needs to be. That does it on mobile too. Jeez. Oh my god, it is a skew! That's so funny! <laughs> I'm not gonna lie because I was leaning this way. And <laughs> you were counter. <laughs> you were so counter like, angled. So I was like, "Oh, I guess they took it down." And then I leaned over. Here. I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> That's so good. I love it. So, Last of Us has been. So the show came out what this Friday? The, the show dropped what two episodes at once? Right? Is that uh, how? It no, came it out? dropped two episodes. It's been two weeks now. It's been two weeks. I heard. Really, really good response to the first episode. I heard slightly more lukewarm response to the second, but still, like, it's it's got that uh, cultural momentum in it. So, funny you should mention that because The Last of Us statistically has become HBO's largest two-week audience growth for an original drama series. Episode one had the largest opening uh, uh, audience of an original program since Boardwalk Empire. Um, with 4.7 million for episode one. Episode two's drop on HBO and HBO Max had 5.7 million views viewers. Uh, that's a 22% increase. So says Eurogamer, uh, because I can't okay. be bothered to check their maths. Um, but apparently that is absolutely um, blowing up, and I'm really excited about it. Mm -hmm. Although... Every time that show gets more successful, all I can think about is we had kind of this problem where Henry Cavill got into some really big things, and now he's in none of them. Like, um, yeah, well, Mando ended season two pretty cleanly, but then Mandalorian season two point five happened, and so Mandalorian season three comes out in March, and I feel like between Disney and HBO. I feel like either either one of them could start a bidding war to try to monopolize Pedro Pascal's time. But I think what's going to happen, especially because Mando shoots on the volume most of the time, that's not a really demanding filming schedule that has you True. you know jet setting around the world. Um like Andor was a lot of location shooting. Um you know Witcher was a lot of location shooting. Um, and probably the same would have been said for, like, a lot of the Superman stuff. Um, and with them both being TV shows, um, TV shows will have, like, a section of the year where they are in production. And that lets you 
you know, then another show, whatever. Um, I think that it's possible, though not assured, that Disney and HBO, perhaps via Pedro Pascal, would sync up their production schedules. Because so far, obviously, it's worked. That he's got two shows coming out this year, and we haven't heard anything about that. But at the same time, hope the guy doesn't burn himself out. Hell yeah. Uh, Amsler, hell yeah, take that, Game of Thrones. And, uh, more well, like- I mean, well, Game of Thrones, when it first came out and became HBO's biggest thing of last decade, like, I don't think that there's a question of it. Game of Thrones was the biggest thing for HBO last decade. When it first came out, it wasn't on streaming. It was just on yeah. HBO. Yep. Um, and so if HBO Max was around then, I think they would have seen similar kind of like huge numbers coming up. It was a big driver for them initially when um, HBO's streaming platforms launched. It was a really big thing. And I think that Game of Thrones, um, was it House of the Dragon, didn't get that kind of jump because of people that were burned by the end of Game of Thrones. People that felt that it didn't stick the landing and that they didn't want to give the franchise another go. <laughs> oh, seriously? Um, and so with Last of Us being something fresh that, again, comes with a baked-in audience like Game of Thrones did, um, has the star power and so forth, um, then, wow. Um, then I, it doesn't surprise me that this is another big one. Taco Bell just redeemed Hydrate. Um I'm going to go do that while you grab out the prediction winner because... Gladly. I'm out. Um, so, folks, uh, go this was our, our close, most closely contested one thus far. Uh, uh, Cherry Jubilee Mint Thins, 11% of the votes with 2.7K. Uh, the Mystery Box with 40%, 10K. And Snowball m ms with 49%, 12K votes. Congratulations, folks. Enjoy your channel points, and we will enjoy our Schmoball M&Ms. Game of Thrones definitely didn't stick to landing, but I did give uh, House of Dragon a shot in the first season. It was good. I'm glad to hear it, and that also makes me really excited um, because it looks good, um, and I want it to be good, and not just because I want to watch my favorite one of my favorite actors from Doctor Who. Uh, <laughs> So, tonight's snack is brought to you by, uh, and we don't avoid political topics, the M&M's characters. Cry about it, you bag of bitches. They're anthropomorphized candies. Just because you don't like the things they say doesn't mean they're not adorable. So dumb. I am glad the actress that's getting the nod to be the spokesperson for M&M's, but uh, at the same point, the candies are saying and doing things I don't like. I'm glad um, I missed most of what that was all about. Don't. Mm. Don't look it up. You'll just vomit all over yourself the way I did. Um, and it's not even going to be rainbow vomit because that's Skittles. Dave, you're going to break it again, aren't you? I, I am still going through. I have a couple of those Dracula Hershey Kisses left, and you savaged that bag. I'm proud of you. Tools. But, Dave, they're not sexy. Ugh. Gross. They were too sexy. So what exactly am I to expect with these snowball M&Ms? This one, some of the candy coating came off. I guess that's... White chocolate and pretzel. Now, I won't lie. I hate white chocolate. I do. I won't lie. I'm not a fan of pretzel. I won't lie. I think this is my favorite. Do, Do you want some of them? I'll take a few more. I, don't I like, like the number four, so I need two more in here to, like, round this out. Snowball M&Ms are sexy. <laughs> um, Beep. Too salty. I don't like the pretzel. I was literally simultaneously a bitch about the white chocolate. <laughs> uh, there is no making us happy here on this program. <laughs> Steve, these are for you. Fuck yeah. We have a winner. Um, two things I actually like, white chocolate and pretzel. 
Mmm. 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 Oh, now they're on the floor, Steve. Everyone ignore the fact that I dropped one on the floor earlier. Let the candies hit the floor. Let the candies hit no. Pick the candies up. There's a dog. Dun, 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 burn. Oh god. Um, I know dogs can't have chocolate. Can dogs have white chocolate since white chocolate isn't technically chocolate? Can you research that? <laughs> can dogs eat white chocolate? Love Alec, yes. I want to see what's in the mystery box. I guess you'll have to wait until next week to see what's in the mystery box next week. As far <laughs> as what is, it was this week. This oh is why well. we can't have nice things, Steve. <laughs> um, this this harkens back to during St. Jude's Play Live where I dropped one of the uh, uh, the very incredibly hot, uh, uh, hot spicy nuts. And I was like, oh, crap, we can't leave this on the floor because Ash will find it. And then if you check the footage, I skillfully dropped it back in the bag and then spent 25 minutes looking for something that wasn't on the floor. Oh, like, I remember that. So good. I really appreciated that uh, um, League of Reaper hung out for that. Um, we've got a lot more stories to talk yep. about. and uh, uh, But please. Sure. Um, so we've talked about artificial intelligence before, but we're going to take uh, a divergence from AI art and go into other applications of our robot overlords, like the military. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> I don't like where this is going. In an upcoming book about applications of artificial intelligence in the military, Paul Shari's, uh, Shari Scary, uh, Paul shares the story of how U.S. Marines were used to train a human detection algorithm. Basically, this thing with a whole bunch of sensors was set up, and they just walked around it and conversed, whatever, did normal human behavior so that it would be trained to know how humans act. After a while, though, they were then asked to defeat the algorithm rather than train it. Quote, they parked the robot in the middle of a traffic circle and the Marines had to approach it undetected starting from a long distance away. If any Marine could get all the way in and touch the robot without being detected, they would win. There were eight Marines... In this exercise. Oh, how, my God. How many do you think were able to reach this undetected? You know what? I'm going to go. I'm going to go on the other end. Uh, uh, six. Higher. All eight of them? Yep. All eight. <laughs> Not a single one was detected because they're smart. This, despite the jokes about Marines and crayons. They're smart. Um, so let's see. What were some of the things that some of them did? One of them stripped a fir tree and – sorry, this is a direct quote – field stripped a fir tree and walked like a fir tree. I don't know how a fir tree walks, but nonetheless, they were doing the thing of holding branches. Please, 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 Boop. please, please tell me somebody did the Metal Gear Solid box trick. Yes! 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 I can die happy now! <laughs> we will... Imp Slayer, yes! <laughs> oh, we can finally beat the robots by a, just wearing a, a box on us. A couple of them somersaulted. Two of them hid in a cardboard box and snuck up on the robot. They did things that hid the human signature. They moved in ways that they hadn't been moving while training the algorithm. Oh my god! And they all so successfully good. defeated... The uh, AI algorithm that they had been working on. Yes! Metal Gear Solid forever! Steve, we have to remember to tell Mike this tomorrow. We must, because he's playing Metal Gear Rising. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's like, hey, you can sneak up on the U.S. military with that. Amp going, I wouldn't it? try it, but... Taco Bell, they're trying to train Skynet, because that's what that sounded like at first. Amp, wasn't this a side mission in Mass Effect? <laughs> and then more like everyone has called it with all A. A I is dumb. Someone got that on video because I can't find it. I, th th what? Th so that is a story from a book on they... artificial intelligence in yeah, the I don't military. Think especially it with wasn't, military it stuff. It wasn't a, a headline like that all. That's one paragraph in the book. Um, so again, the author is Paul, I'm not positive of the pronunciation of the last name, it's S-C-H-A-R-R-E. Um, 
I did not get the title of the book uh, that is upcoming, but if that's something that sounds interesting to you, you can look up that author. Again, uh, S-C-H-A-R-R-E, um, talking about, uh, in general, the use of artificial intelligence applications in the military, which is scary as hell, and I don't like the idea of. Four Battlegrounds. Sorry? Four Battlegrounds. Four Battlegrounds? The, the letter four? The, uh, sorry, the letter four. The Spelled out F-O-U-R. Battlegrounds. Power is in the age of artificial intelligence. Four battlegrounds, power in the age of artificial intelligence. Thank you, Steve. So if you, you want... wouldn't try to kill me, would you? And is there something else I can help with? <laughs> Are you dodging my question? Hmm. I don't have an answer for that. Is there something else I can help with? No thank you. Okay. She put a period after that, okay. I am in very much danger. <laughs> I'm looking for a new co-host for Nerd Glasses now. <laughs> oh, no. Also, Army of None, Weapons and the Power of War is another book by the same author. Uh, that is uh, looks older, so probably is... Like, artificial intelligence is such a rapidly evolving uh, thing that that... The use of robots in war, whatever it was 10 years ago, totally outdated. Um, my first audiobook that I ever listened to was one that a friend burned to CDs, and it was, um, God, I forget exactly what it was called, but it was more or less how to stop, I think it was called How to Stop the Robot Uprising. Um, and a lot of it was like very, it, it, it followed the zombie survival guide kind of formula, where it is mostly fictional and, oh, you know, it's fun to, you know, what happens when the Roomba picks up a knife and then, you know, starts to go into, you know, all the Skynet type stuff and how you would live through that. But it also talks about state of the art for mid aughts writing uh, technology. And it breathlessly talks about how a car went cross country with no one behind, with no one steering it for 95% of the ride in 2007 which was the first that many of us had heard about this kind of thing. Now, AI cars are out there terrorizing the streets, uh, brake checking everyone in a tunnel, causing an eight car pileup in San Francisco. Also in San Francisco, about 20 um, Chevy Bolts from Cruz descended on an intersection, had a software bug that stopped them all there for hours. Um, yeah, so we're used to the idea of AI on our, on our streets now, and it's no more comforting now than it was back then. In fact, it's worse. So now imagine that with the military. On that I, note, Dave, please give me something else to think about. Before we get ourselves added to another list. <laughs> um, so we all know, and we are big fans of uh, Activision Blizzard stories here. Um, okay, I thought you were about to say of Activision Blizzard. Of the stories. Yeah, of the stories of, about of them. stories yes. here. Yes, we yes, love yes. talking about it. Well, as you guys know, the Federal Trade Commission is suing to block the $69 million acquisition of uh, ZeniMax and, uh, uh, and... No, Activision Blizzard. Ac Microsoft oh, my or, God. Microsoft yeah. already has Jesus. ZeniMax. That was a couple years uh, ago. Activision Blizzard. Um, and... Uh, Microsoft, of course, is responding, uh, and both Boulder and I agreed with a large amount of decorum. Uh, they've been taking a lot of high road. They've been kind of doing the... <laughs> they've been taking the attitude of a company who has had the FTC poke into them before, and they are being calm and collected about it. Basically, when you have that one uncle that goes through customs a whole lot and is very chill about the whole thing, even as he's pulled over for the third time in a year. Um, so Microsoft, in turn of, of having to fight the federal government in court, have decided to do a move that we saw in a previous big video game uh, electronics case that we had where our little brother, uh, Two Insane Games, Epic Games, was subpoenaed by Apple to provide uh, information. For those of you that don't know what I'm getting at here, Microsoft, as of uh, 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 last week, subpoenaed Sony. Sony has been a big pusher for blocking this deal. Um, for uh, 
primarily because um, it would put them at a bit more of a disadvantage. In the past couple years, Sony has come out with a lot more bigger names, bigger games for its consoles, and they're afraid of losing that advantage. Um, and so they're using the honestly kind of rightful grounds of antitrust legislation to try to make sure that Microsoft doesn't do this. And they're trying to like astroturf gamers are saying this when it's Sony's doing a lot of the pushing here. So, Sony PR is saying this, but we're going to say it's little Timmy from down the street who accurately has numbers in the thousands of millions yep. of, uh, of how things are. Again, so Microsoft, Microsoft. You're familiar has, with that phrase, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, cool. So Microsoft has not been able to release what they are asking for in the subpoena, but they are allowed to say publicly that the 17th was the original due date for the subpoena, and Sony uh, 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 asked for more time to, quote, move to limit or quash or otherwise respond to the subpoena. And Microsoft very, very coolly went, of course you can have more time. You have till the 27th. And we'll wait for you there. Um, which, by the way, is in three days, and I literally cannot wait till some of this stuff becomes uh, becomes yeah. public record and stuff gets leaked because I've, it will. I've, um, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. It sounds like we're rooting for Microsoft, and I am rooting for Microsoft in so far as I feel like it is beneficial to Activision Blizzard to not be running itself because by itself they will not get rid of Bobby at the top. Um, and he is the worst thing going for them right now. I think it needs new leadership. And if it's Microsoft, great. That said, I know that this is a very problematic thing because of potential antitrust issues. Um, and I do think that the U.S. needs to be pursuing more antitrust stuff. It looks like they're doing so. Kind of sucks that it's this one, but no matter what happens, it's both kind of eh, but okay. I've said it before, I just want to restate that because we sound very like, yay, Microsoft! And we're aware. We're aware. We, yes. The the tone and tenor of these things that we choose is for the air and things like that because obviously if we straight balled uh, uh, every single news thing that we had, this program would be uh, infinitely less fun. Um, and also you wouldn't hear our personal opinions. You would only hear these yeah, yeah. fact statements and people would be able to put cardboard boxes on and run up to us. Um <sighs> <laughs> Apologies for the noises in the background of this stream and after the nerd glasses when Steve, we all return to the shack uh, as the wonderful folks who sell boats uh, uh, during the boat fair sale here in the Wilton Mall are now, of course, uh, uh, moving the boats because they yep. are leaving the mall. Um, and, and now's the perfect time for them to do it after hours just happens to be. That's also when we're doing our thing. So you, if you hear slamming and screaming and things in the background, just know... It's not a moita. Yeah, just, yet. Oh, hold on. Can I say that I am getting very frustrated at the, the current trend? At first it was kind of cute, but now I'm just getting sick of it. Of uh, creators saying unaliving uh, instead of kill, murder, etc. Is it because algorithms are, are getting rid of anything if you say the words... Kill, I, death. I don't uh, and stuff know. Like, that. like I noticed, I saw it first. Because at I first, first I saw it on TikTok. On TikTok yeah. And like TikTok is very strict about what they will and will not show. Um, I follow someone. Um, she's uh, gotten really well known really fast. Uh, Nicole Conan, I want to say is uh, her last name. Um, lumberjack, Canadian lesbian lumberjack on TikTok and getting a lot of content like that. She um, made. Uh, some videos with a woodcutting sword, but live weapons are immediately deleted off of the platform. Um, so that content needs to be like on YouTube, on Instagram, something like that. A TikTok is very, very jumpy when it comes to anything that it doesn't like. So like if someone says kill in an audio, the subtitles, you know, the creators will go in and change it to like unalive or skull emoji. Um, yeah. So that it doesn't get buried by the algorithm. I was I was watching um, uh, 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 Facebook video algorithms have been hilarious, and they've been recently showing me um, automotive wiki 
things mm-hmm. where like people are talking about buying million dollar cars and this and that and the other. I'm glad and that Facebook's reel stopped sh- just showing me fucking Family Guy episodes. They were doing that for months. Yeah, I, I would not gonna lie. During the shutdown, when I got kept getting shown full episodes of Jag, I was having a great time with that. I won't lie. I was very happy. I did feel like I was an old man again because there I am sitting on the pot for two and a half hours. Claire's like, "Are you okay?" I'm like, "Wait, they're about to find out who did the murder." <laughs> so, so the reason I bring it up is that I was watching a Game Grumps episode this past week where they're playing the game Bears Restaurant, mm-hmm. where it's uh, quickly revealed that you are making like, for people that have just died before they go to heaven, you are making their last meal, um, and it's kind of dealing with that, and you end up seeing how they died, um, and so there's. Uh, at least one character who committed suicide. Um, and so, like, Dan says that, and Aaron's like, oh, don't, don't, don't say that. <sighs> Unalived himself. And it's just like, that's... If it hadn't jumped the shark for me by then, that's where it did. It's like, they have their audience. You know, they don't need to rely on the algorithm, and they very much don't like they don't really the content they post they, is not usually they don't they don't really yeah. chase the the trends like that the most they you know they've they've maintained the thing of not swearing in the first minute of the video when youtube was kind of unclear about that now they say 15 seconds but they still do first minute um and yeah it's just like you know dan just kind of offhanded brought up the point of like how can we talk about things if we can't even say them um so Twitch, Twitch, we know that you are very strict in enforcing your terms of service. Almost every week, we're able to bring a a ban out there. Um, Please do not get twitchy about uh, words like that. Uh, Be mindful that stuff can be talked about in context, in serious ways, without promoting behaviors that are harmful these words and thoughts and stuff can still be used. I know that there's a fine line be, uh, between that. You know, there's certainly, uh, oh, well, you know, there's ways that it can be abused, but please consider content so that serious stuff can be discussed without just going for a silly bunch of word blocking garbage. Molecular Mortis, I would say it might be a censorship workaround, but the problem is, everyone is using it in all contexts you'll have tiktoks where people are stabbing each other excuse me uh, uh, uh unaliving each other with swords uh, uh uh sticks um and then you'll have videos where people are talking about the holocaust and they have to say things like millions of people were unalived mm-hmm. and things like that and not to equate those two things yeah but to give the idea of the scope of where this is going it seems more of a fear of algorithmically being yeah. unshareable rather than any sort of censorship for the sake of, of uh, uh, helping people. Uh, Be- because in, on, on TikTok and on other platforms, when there is something serious going to be discussed, a lot of creators, not everyone obviously, a lot of creators are good about putting a content warning or trigger warning at the start of the video. Um, and... You know, maybe there you might say self unaliving or you go with, say, the word suicide, but with an exclamation mark instead of the I to get around the algorithm detecting the text and uh, burying it forever. So uh. it, in, in, in some messages, I will say, for example, uh. I mention it by name on the weekend Wednesday when I do my closeout mm-hmm. um, because it's in the context of what I'm saying. It's important that people know the power of what we're talking about. For the case of people making silly goofs and shorts and throwing feces at each other for Mr. Beast's amusement, maybe you shouldn't mention those things. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Maybe it's not so funny, haha. But um, social media and, and content creation is as it is, and people watch what they watch. And there, there is a lot of... Um, difficulty i think right now on social media and on broadcast platforms and such in considering context and what that often manifests is um honest well-intentioned discussions um getting banned and buried yeah. and 
and then bad faith arguments that don't use the specific words, but we all know what they mean, not getting buried. It's an imperfect system, and we hope that all of us together mm -hmm. can collectively acknowledge, I don't, work I don't, on, I don't necessarily do. expect better of TikTok because it is, in the end, a Chinese company uh, that runs it, even if the North American stuff is somewhat separate. But yeah. because uh, of certainly the idea that uh, China is very censorious, I believe is the word, um, that there's still going to be trepidation about that kind of thing reflecting on them and so forth, even if the, their network is separate from the Chinese network. Um, but it bothers me a lot more when that ends up spreading to other platforms like YouTube. So anyway, that was a tangent we went on and it's about nine o'clock. So Dave, do you have something, um, do you have anything a, a little cheerier to end us out for our show this evening? I've got just the thing Ladies and gentlemen, you can look forward to, firstly, that very loud noise in the background. But you love him, you read about him, and you saw him on air. He is, of course, Lord of the Rings Gollum. And the game was supposed to originally be released in 2021. And it got delayed, and it got delayed again, and it got delayed again. Well, they announced... <laughs> they announced another delay. No. But this time, it's for but this time it's for Keepsies Gollum because this time, in the interest of the best possible experience to the Lord of the Rings audience, because Lord knows you can't rules judge a rules judge. Um, this <laughs> no, game the coast found is going to be coming out in the first half of the fiscal year 2023-2024. So that means sometime between April. In September. Okay. We definitively have that out of the horse's mouth. Um, Taco Pill with a posture check. Uh, uh, let's oh. sit it up, loosen it up here. Um, I'm sitting cross-legged here, but I can still... Basically, uh, uh, Lord of the Rings Gollum has now been nailed down to a couple of months, and it will be coming out uh, this fiscal year. Nice. And I can't wait for that game. It looks amazing. Check it out. But you should also check out the Discord we have down below. Make sure to hit that follow button and join us here on Insane Games TV. 11 different streamers, seven days a week worth of content that we couldn't even, in an hour-long broadcast, get all out in one mouthful. And you. We can't do it with without you, and we appreciate you to no end and much love. Still uh, not as you. bad as Skull and Crossbones or whatever the game was called. Right, Ubisoft's open-world pirate game that is... Still not have a release date. Possibly um, this year, but we've said that for the past three years. <laughs> Maybe what this is that year? called? I think it's, it's not, Skull and it? Bones? Yeah, yeah, it's Skull and Bones. Okay. I think so. Um, but keep it tuned in here, because right after the Nerd Glasses podcast, Steve is going to be finishing... We'll see. Finishing... So. Car Quest. It's... Going to happen this week. This is it. This is the last time he's streaming it. It's gonna happen. He's been saying that for almost as many weeks as Skull and Bones has been getting delayed. So we'll see how it goes. But. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see that, make sure that you stay tuned right here. By this point, I think all of you know the drill, but if you're new here, we go offline. It takes us about five minutes to move all of this equipment six feet to the right. We come online with a 10-minute countdown during which you can grab your popcorn or what have you. Uh, take a little potty break. It's fine. And then Steve's here with the shack. Uh, and, of course, you can use that time to make sure that you're following us right here for so much more content and the Discord. Uh, you can follow me at a whole bunch of stuff, Voter Bug. You can find him at some uh, twitch.tv slash dm314, and his other stuff is below that. So plenty of ways to find us, keep up with us, keep up with the network. In the meantime, folks, I've been Voter. I've been Dave Mann. And I realized we I didn't actually intro the show correctly. I just went straight into things because that joke was so good to threw us off. Anyway, this has been the Nerd Glasses Podcast. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>